Welcome to Lessons in Leadership. Steve Adubato here, Mary Gamba in her Easter outfit. <laughs> No, Steve. We're taping this this summer. Hold on, Mary. It's almost We're going to make it a drinking game. Even though this show airs at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings, yeah. I will take a drink of my cappuccino every time we start a show and you comment on my outfit. But I'm going to take it as a compliment. I listen, like how I pop off of the background. So I know. It, it listen, looks- Carolyn Welsh will join us in a second from the Sharing Network, but I have to do this. The reason I do it, Mary, is because all I do is have the same suit jacket on, my same blue pinstripe. I have eight of these same my wife's like you're so boring with your clothes (laughs) and same white shirt and i just changed my tie with mary she looks totally different each time i know and i don't like that pressure i have to say if it were acceptable for our viewers i would get a suit and i would just change my tie just like you and and we may get there i mean we just taped our 100th episode earlier today and we've been doing this a long time and I'm running out of outfits. So okay. I, I think it's perfect. There's only so many different types of combinations that you can wear, but you always look good, Steve. Thank you. And welcome to our show all about fashion. No, uh, in all seriousness, <laughs> speaking of fashion, there's no transition here that makes any sense. No. Uh, we're joined talking about lessons in leadership. We have Carolyn M. Welsh, Vice President, Chief Operating Officer at the great New Jersey Sharing Network. Good to see you, Carolyn. Hi, Steve. How are you? Hi, Mary. You, you I can help no... you transition because you wear blue and you wear green because you're a supporter and an advocate for organ and tissue donation. Yeah, so that's why you wear your blue suit all the time. Yeah, and I can't find anything to ever match this because I don't have a green tie, but it doesn't matter. This works with anything. Tell everyone why. And again, for those who have seen this on the air, I've, I've, this is one I've never taken off. What is this? Why does it matter? So um, our our green wristband, uh, New Jersey Sharing Network, and sub, uh, supporter of organ and tissue donation. So the gift of life and saving people in our community and making sure that when someone passes away, they say yes to donations so that someone else can live. And the website of the Sharing Network will be up throughout this segment. A, for you to find out more about the Great Sharing Network, one of our longtime partners and friends, not just on lessons and leadership, but also for our public television broadcasting. We've been involved, Mary and I, and our terrific team of producers, editors, et cetera, uh, have been involved in public awareness around organ and tissue donation and cooperation with the Sharing Network for many, many years. Joe Roth, the leader, along with uh, Carolyn and the team. Carolyn, for those right now who are saying, what the heck does organ donation have to do with lessons in leadership? So um, I I laugh because working at New Jersey Sharing Network and working for an organ procurement organization is leadership lessons at its best. Um, I think in many situations and in many healthcare organizations, the leading um, in chaos, right? And the leader having to be calm in chaos doesn't happen in every single industry and every organization at a nonprofit and an organ procurement organization where you're dealing with so many people in so many situations with life and death, leadership is super important. Follow up on this before Mary jumps in. Uh, The most significant role model or role models for you that have helped you become the leader that you are today, Carolyn, include? So um, right off the bat, my dad, I lost my father when I was 14 years old, um, on the youngest of five. My father was a uh, vice president of uh, sales and marketing for Foodorama Supermarkets. But when we would go anywhere, everyone knew my father. So passed away at a young age at 47. And I will tell you today, I still will have people, if they hear my maiden name, say, I knew your father and he gave me my first job. He helped me, he helped my family. So it wasn't just, um, in work. He helped them as people and in their life. So I would say that was the first for me and probably the biggest impact, even in a short amount of time. Uh, Carolyn, one more quick follow-up. Sure. Your greatest leadership challenge today is? Yeah, sure. So I think uh, going off what I was saying about calm and chaos and The two greatest challenges, I think, over the last two and a half, three years, right, living through uh, the pandemic, I think working in an OPO, um, we're trained regularly to be in an OPO. I'm sorry, uh, we we, we decipher acronyms, OPO? Organ Procurement Organization. Got it. So 
um, working in an organ procurement organization, uh, the common chaos is a regular 24 seven. And through this time frame, our two greatest challenges were, we asked ourselves, how can we do this? How are we gonna continue to save lives and facilitate the gift of donation? And how are we gonna support our staffs? Because the staff, we're going through everything that the general public were, right? Emotionally, physically, mentally. So they had to take care of their home life, but they had to be on their game more than ever to save someone else's life. So I think through, through our challenges through that, the leadership kind of calm and chaos was it. And bringing our people together and really listening and hearing their thoughts and solutions was probably the best thing that we could have done. So we were semi-prepared because that's what we do every day. Mm. Um, but it took it to a whole new level. You know, Mary, as I listen to Carolyn, um, we, we think what we do is important, but what they do is extraordinarily important. So we talk about, oh, we have to pivot. We have to change our studio situation. We have to be more remote. How do we streamline? How do we look what they're doing? Go ahead, Mary. You got yeah, it. saving lives. And, and it's truly inspirational. I've just always enjoyed working with you and Joe Roth and the team at the NJ Sharing Network. And I would love to take a deeper dive into trust. I know that that is a huge component of what you do. It's getting the family of the uh, patients that are uh, donating those organs. It's getting the family of the patients and the patients themselves that are receiving those organs. How do you communicate in such a way to gain that trust, that all important trust that, yes, this is a right decision, both for the person donating their organs or the, on behalf of the family or the person receiving those organs? Great question. So. Trust, very important for all the reasons that you said. I think we start with making sure that we have trust with our employees. And at New Jersey Sharing Network, people who stay and can do this work, we have to build that trust amongst the entire team. If we genuinely can trust each other, trust the mission, trust what we do every day, then it's it, it kind of spills out into the community uh, and to the public. So working to gain trust, right, being genuine, um, mm. It also leads into our Donation Needs Diversity campaign. How do yeah, you let's build put that. trust? I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Carolyn, let me do this. Yeah. Can we put up right now, uh, Sylvester? Sylvester, our great editor, one of the reasons he's a great editor is not just because he does something we say you should do, is he actually listens to the show <laughs> and follows along. So He's hashtag, our biggest fan. So hashtag Donation Needs Diversity. As you talk about it, it will be up. That is innovation and leadership. Go ahead, please, Carolyn. So a few years ago, um, we really took everyone's thoughts and guidance and our public education team and our communications team and our clinical teams and put them together and said, in New Jersey, what do we need to do? And what is different about New Jersey? Well, we all live here, right? And we love it. I've been born, raised, went to college in New Jersey, never left, don't plan on leaving. And what is Mary it? Mary does, but go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I was born and raised here, but we just want to see the rest of the country. Yes. yes. Well, you can do Mary, it on Mary wants to pay. She wants to pay lower taxes. That's and I want to have story. lower taxes. That's well, that Carolyn, is true. Pick, pick we it up. We all want uh, that. Yes. <laughs> hashtag yes. donation needs diversity. I, yes. I, I apologize. That's okay. So in New Jersey, what is it, right? We're, we're beautifully diverse. So how do we build trust with the community? So bringing donation and awareness to where people are. And in New Jersey, all people access information differently and in different ways. So donate, hashtag donation needs diversity is a campaign that was put together to bring printed materials to those that don't have access to electronic or, or media, social media, um, public relations, uh, news, TV, all different components, health, uh, events, healthcare events, in, in direct communities to bring about problems, questions, concerns, and build trust with those that at many levels, especially in the last three years, lost a little trust in the healthcare system. So how do we build that trust for healthcare overall? And then it spills into donation. Our partnerships with hospitals and healthcare help donation become a possibility and saves people's lives. And making sure we go to the community to make sure that we address issues in each person's community. Everyone has a different uh, concern and we address that and we have a team of people that address it throughout. And August is uh, Do Donor Minority Awareness Month, but we really like to stick to donation needs diversity. 4,000 plus people waiting in New Jersey as we speak for an organ. Yes. Across the nation, is it 100,000? It's, it's a little bit above 100,000. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, and 66% of those waiting in New Jersey are people of color. Before I let you go, your confidence as a communicator, I, I was recently at the 5K with our great producer, uh, Jackie Tricarico, who's gonna put together a terrific half hour, uh, possibly two half hours on the 5K. And uh, there's an annual 5K that the Sharing Network has. And we talk to people who have given the gift of life to others, who have received the gift of life, who are survivors of those who gave the gift of life, family members of those who received the gift of life and how it's changed people's lives. That being said, and I interviewed you there along with some others, and it, what has always struck me, Carolyn, is that you're very confident as a public communicator, and I don't separate leadership and communication. You can't be a great leader without being a great communicator. Your confidence as a communicator comes from where? So you know the awards you get when you're in school? What one do you think I got? <laughs> Hold most on. talkative. No, I was going to say most talkative. Yes. Are you serious? Oh, constant, constant. Um, you got most, most talkative. talkative. Most talkative. Um, wow. You know, youngest of five, battling for the the words and getting the words in right. Um, and I will say and share with you. I don't know if you know this, but I was a cheerleader all through college. Um, went to Seton yeah. Hall. Yeah, went to Seton Hall. Seton Hall, um, one of our great sponsors of Lessons Go Pirates. Go Pirates, go ahead. Because <laughs> I wear my blue. I hear you. And um, uh, that is a definite- oh, Hold um, on, what, what, were you, what were you saying? Yes, Go Pirates. <laughs> well, we, I got props all day. Real coffee was in there, but go ahead. <laughs> so, go Pirates, pick it up. Cheerleader, go ahead. I, I love people. I love people. Um, I stay at this job because it's serving the community, but I love to help the people that work here as well. My job is to help and facilitate the gift of life, but to do that, it is my job to motivate, to life coach, to stay involved with our 200 plus employees because not one person can make donation happen. It is fully a team. So I just say the whole thing, cheerleading as you know, the whole battle, we can do an all other show about it, whether it's a sport or not, right? But. Um, it was the greatest experience. It took me all over the country, um, meeting different people, speaking. You had to. We did. We did uh, Boys and Girls Club of Newark. We would go and spend time as our team. We did community work, volunteer work. Yep. Spoke to schools and said, you know, this is what you can all do. And it's just, I love people and I love to talk. You, can, you know, uh, Carolyn's making something very clear. The more experience, even if you're uncomfortable, I tell our daughter, Olivia, who's into dance and softball and she doesn't love to speak in public. And I'll say, Olivia, I know you don't love to speak in public, but the more you do it, the better you get, the more confident you get, the more comfortable you get, then you like it. Meaning if you just, if you just lean in, I know Mary, I'm sorry for uh, Cheryl Sandberg right here, who has, who she's leaning out at Facebook as we speak, but lean in, her book, lean in. <laughs> yeah. Lean in, lean into what makes you uncomfortable. That's part of leadership. I'm sorry, I'm off my soapbox. Carolyn Walsh from the Sharing Network to, to you and Joe and the great team there. Cannot thank you for being our partners enough. And also you go on the website, you can get one of these. All good. Thanks, Carolyn. Thank you for having me. You got it. Steve Adubato, Mary, Carolyn. We'll be back right after this. This edition of Lessons in Leadership is made possible by the Bucino Leadership Institute at Seton Hall University, Prager Metis, Valley Bank, the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825, the North Ward Center, the New Jersey Sharing Network, Delta Dental of New Jersey, Kessler Foundation, Veolia, Resourcing the World, and Seton Hall University, showing the world what great minds can do since 1856. This is Mary Gamba. If you want more leadership tips and tools, log on to stand-deliver.com. That's stand-deliver.com. Promotional support for this edition of Lessons in Leadership with me, Steve Adubato, and my colleague, Mary Gamba, has been provided by NJ.com, NJBIA, and New Jersey Business Magazine, CIANJ, and Commerce Magazine. Most people don't think about where their water comes from, but we do. Veolia, more than water, resourcing the world. 
Welcome back to Lessons in Leadership. Steve Adubato with Mary Gamba, our good friend, Mark Burson, the chairman of Fidelco Group, and also the uh, previous chair, past chair. I mean, this is very recent at our great friends, with our great friends at RWJ Barnabas Health. Good to see you, Mark. Good to see you, Steve. Real quick, let's do this because I remember reading as we're taping this program uh, going into 4th of July that Lester Owens has become the new chair of the board of RWJ Barnabas Health, the first African-American to chair that board. You just stepped down. That's a big deal, is it not? Uh, I think so. <laughs> My family thinks so. <laughs> yeah, it's a, bi- well, it's uh, yeah. a big deal that you were the chair, but your term ended. Uh, it's a big deal. It, it's, it's a very big deal that uh, Lester is stepping on and that we're, you know, Barry retires, uh, Barry, Barry Strauss Strauss. Be at, at right. year end. And uh, the new uh, management team uh, that uh, will lead the course is, uh, we'll call it, we have a, a president in training and Mark Madigan. So very excited. It's, uh, we got a youthful team, a new team, mm-hmm. and I'm um, looking forward to very big things from them all. And Mark, along those lines, lessons in leadership is different from our public broadcasting. It's focused on leadership and innovation, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> One of the things that, struck, that strikes me about you is that we've had countless conversations offline, is you constantly innovate. At Fidelco, you're constantly developing, growing new projects, new initiatives. There's a, particularly in Newark, there's the, um, the, the tell folks about their, the most exciting initiative the Lionsgate Newark Studios is one, Newark Lionsgate uh, Studios. Also, Melba Wilson, uh, celebrity chef, you talked about her last time, coming into Newark restaurant, Melba's 550. Where the heck does the obsession with innovation and creativity for you come from, Mark? <laughs> uh, the interest in keep doing things that are new and different. Um, it, it's, it's a challenge. You know, I was trained as in the law, and one of the things that was always uh, why I loved it so much was each case was new. Each case was uh, you had to be strategic. Uh, I do jigsaw puzzles as a hobby and, uh, you know, fitting out space, um, looking at, at, at businesses and problems and giving new approaches, uh, innovative approaches is uh, just it's something that comes very natural and what keeps me uh, at my game. And speaking about your game, we're also going to mention Opportunity Project. Mary, let's make sure in post-production we put up Opportunity Project, a terrific organization. Uh, Mark, uh, 30 seconds on Opportunity Project that you and a great team of folks started a while back, please. Well, it's uh, Opportunity Project started as a result of injury to uh, my son, um, and uh, my then wife and I and um, another family uh, began what's called um, Opportunity Project. And the idea was to create a place um, where uh, those who had suffered traumatic brain injury would have an opportunity uh, to um, come together and work on feeling comfortable, not challenged, not out of place, and work on, in a sense, you could call it re-entry. In another way, it's just working their way back to new normal. And it's been uh, over 25 years, and we're so thrilled with what's there. They're part of uh, Children's Specialized Hospital, which is part of RWJ Barnabas Health. And uh, they, they, the membership and our ability to reach those in need are really terrific. The clubhouse model, which it uses, yep. is run by the members. And we're, we continue to be exciting as that too is innovating. In fact, COVID, which uh, closed down the clubhouse for a period of time, introduced us to a new remote format, uh, which will be used in conjunction with the clubhouse now that it's reopened. Uh, to grow our, our outreach and our ability to serve its members. And I've been honored uh, every year. There's a, a terrific golf tournament, that uh, charity golf tournament that raises a significant amount of money for Opportunity Project. And I've been honored to host that event for many, many years and will continue to do that. 
Uh, it's another example of Mark and his family dealing with a very difficult situation involving your son, Gary, and deciding to innovate, create, and make a difference in the lives of others. Mary, please jump in. Yeah, definitely, Mark. You talk about innovation and pivoting and how the pandemic essentially uh, gave you that opportunity to realize, hey, you want to know what? We can reach more people, more families going remote. What has been the biggest lesson? We're taping this two and a half years into the pandemic. What has been the biggest leadership lesson that you have learned over the past two and a half years? Well, if, if one ever had to uh, pivot and adjust, um, the pandemic has uh, caused that. I think we're still at a point that it's difficult to anticipate uh, what the new norm will be uh, for the long term. Um, the big lesson that we've learned uh, now is the lack of face-to-face, -face, lack of collaboration in, uh, we'll call it old style, because for, for now we're seeing so many of those uh, employed uh, are not returning to the office, at least That's not right. on a daily basis. And uh, I don't know what that means uh, for, for us. Our, our group, uh, our, our, our small office, we're all there. And obviously, uh, at generally Fidelco. speaking, at Fidelco, and generally speaking at RWJ Barnabas, uh, we can't serve the healthcare community all remotely, though, there's a, a tremendous uh, increase um, in remote appointments. Telemedicine, uh, telemedicine. Um, yes. So um, if anything, it's, it's that there's some permanent adjusting to be done, but I don't know the full impact uh, that's there. I, I do believe uh, that the younger work community um, will miss an awful lot. If we don't get back to a substantial, I don't say it has to be a five day work week, right. but where we're interacting uh, human to human. That's such a critical part of the learning process, learning how to deal with personalities. Um, we learn from one another. And, and uh, you know, that's what's so important. In fact, if you look at the transition at RWJ Barnabas, um, I highlighted that the, the new management team, there's no question uh, Mark Madigan with the COO, John Dahl, uh, will lead the charge. Uh, but I, I believe with all my heart that uh, it's the management team and the style set by Barry Ostowski with um, the, the a team approach, the a collaboration. Um, you know, you take people, you train them, you give them authority to to act, that's right. and uh, that that goes an, an awful long way to success. What's interesting, Mary, is I've been at Mark's office, and one of the things that strikes me is Mark's got a, you go in his office, and he's got a million different projects that Fidelco is working on as a company dealing in development. He's got these projects and maps and designs and. He's calling people into the office and, and it's got all these things going on. It's like he's spinning all these plates and wow, how do you do that remotely? Meaning there is, I know we're doing what we're doing, Mary, remotely, a lot of it. Uh, and you and I have not seen each other face to face many times in the last uh, several years. But the reality is some leaders like Mark, while they can do this, they're much more, you gotta be there, right? Mark, am I making too much of that? Like you call people in, you want to talk to them right there, right? Yeah, I, I you know, I think it's a, it's a continual learning and training experience uh, to be together. When it really comes to negotiating transactions, um, trust. You can't do it on the phone, can you, Mark? You can't close a deal on the phone. I don't think you can close it. We can close it remotely, the mechanics, but you can't gain the trust of people to make deals happen uh, completely remotely. It, it, there, you build reputation because right. people look into your eyes and they see what's going and looking through Zoom, it doesn't get fully get you there. Yeah. It's better than, than uh, you know, no picture at all, but 
it's just not quite the same. Uh, Mark Burson, a longtime friend. Fidelco has been supporting what we've been doing on the public broadcasting side for many years. RWJ Barnabas Health, our most significant sponsor and underwriter. And um, to, to, to the team at Fidelco and RWJ Barnabas Health, we say thank you, Mark. We appreciate you joining us for Lessons in Leadership. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Looking forward to seeing you in person. We'll be right back right after this. Promotional support for this edition of Lessons in Leadership with me, Steve Adubato. And my colleague, Mary Gamba, has been provided by NJ.com, NJBIA, and New Jersey Business Magazine, CIANJ, and Commerce Magazine. I want to thank Mark Burson and also Carolyn Welsh over at the Sharing Network. Mary, real quick, I just went to my leadership library around the corner over here. <laughs> Coach K book, I think Greg Lalavi talked about him on a previous episode, right? There's Ian O'Connor. And also one of my favorite all-time leadership books that you're going to be surprised because you're going to say, that's not a leadership book. Eric Legrand, Believe, number 52, Rutgers University, uh, extraordinary friend of ours. Let's have Eric back, by the way, to talk about his coffee business down in uh, the New Brunswick area. Eric's been leading and changing people's lives for a long time. Hey, Mary, one more quick one. You know, I'm not going to do... Mary, do you remember the last lecture? Oh my gosh, yes, Randy Posh. Look up, put on our website, Mary, let's revise the lessons in the uh, leadership library. There's we constantly Randy... revise, I, it's so exciting because you keep on bringing up all these great books. And I remember when I first started working with you, you shared that book with me and it was truly a gift. And if you haven't checked it out and you're watching today, pick it up, get an audio copy of it. It is really just about overcoming. If life gives you lemons, you can make lemonade. And even if you get Delta hand, that's really not what you want. You could make it into something really special. Randy Posh, long story short, Oprah made him famous because he, before he passed, before Randy passed, very sick um, with a very serious form of cancer, a lecturer, a, a, excuse me, a professor at Carnegie Mellon. The last lecture was the last lecture that they heard each year. And Randy gave that lecture as he knew he was dying. Um, and Oprah had him on right after the last lecture at Carnegie Mellon, which became a video. Actually, look up the last lecture. We'll put it up on the website. Sylvester will do that. His speech at Carnegie Mellon, the last lecture, was not about dying. It was about living. It was about living your life to the fullest. It was extraordinary. And Randy Posh, P-A-U-S-C-H, one of my favorite books ever. About It's about leadership, but it's also about life. I'm off my soapbox. Mary Gamba, Steve Adubato, Lessons in Leadership. Mary, I want to thank you for wearing that beautiful Easter outfit today. Oh, thank you, Steve. And it is not Easter. It is almost July 4th. So my next will be red, white, and blue. Red, white, and blue. <laughs> patriotic never goes out of style. See you next time. This edition of Lessons in Leadership is made possible by the Bucino Leadership Institute at Seton Hall University, Prager Metis, Valley Bank, the International Union of Operating Engineers Local 825, the North Ward Center, the New Jersey Sharing Network, Delta Dental of New Jersey, Kessler Foundation, Veolia, Resourcing the World, and Seton Hall University, showing the world what great minds can do since 1856. This is Mary Gamba. If you want more leadership tips and tools, log on to stand-deliver.com. That's stand-deliver.com. Promotional support for this edition of Lessons in Leadership with me, Steve Adubato, and my colleague, Mary Gamba, has been provided by NJ.com, NJBIA, and New Jersey Business Magazine, CIANJ, and Commerce Magazine. Most people don't think about where their water comes from. But we do. Veolia. More than water. Resourcing the world. I could feel my lungs fill with oxygen and I got my life back. The Sharing Network means to me hope, life, and everything. The Sharing Network was a lifeline to me when I really needed it. We are an organ procurement organization. The core purpose of the New Jersey Sharing Network is to save and enhance lives. To honor those who gave. A tribute to those who received. Offer hope to those who continue to wait. And remember the lives 
lost while waiting. For the gift of life.